Hello and welcome to Out of My Mind. My name is Robison Wells. First question. Did you know the mental illness is phony? This question was sent in by a commenter here on YouTube, and we know how awesome comments on YouTube are. The commenter left a long comment talking about how we are essentially living in a brave new world where we are being drugged by the government to placate us because depression is just a natural reaction to this terrible world we live in. The knee-jerk response here is to say, of course mental illness is a real thing and that it's not phony, because you can find things like schizophrenia on fMRIs, and in autopsies, they can tell the brain of a schizophrenic patient. But they can't actually diagnose depression with any test, and depression is the thing that the commenter was specifically talking about. Depression is diagnosed by the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual, and you have to have five of nine criteria. They are all symptoms, so yes, we're just diagnosing based on symptoms, not on tests. But that doesn't mean that the diagnosis is any less legitimate. Ultimately, what this boils down to are two different things. Number one, only one in five people is diagnosed with a mental illness at some point in their life. So if this is some job by the government to placate all of us, they're doing a really poor job of it. And second, we all recognize how terrible the world is, and most people with depression are not placated by it. So, lousy job at drugging the world into submission, guys. What's the update on your baseball situation? Baseball just started last week, and they're playing an absurd number of games. They've already played four games all against the same team uh, in the last five days. I have to say that I am not enjoying baseball yet. I'm rooting for my team. I like the Dodgers. But I can't watch more than a few innings without ugh, wanting to hit myself in the face. Granted, I can't go more than five minutes without wanting to hit myself in the face. Did you know that the Dodgers have 15 pitchers on their roster. There was Kershaw, who was doing a really bad job on opening day, and I wanted to say, well, lousy Kershaw, who needs him? So I looked up to see how many there were, thinking maybe there would be four. I know they rest pitchers in between games, but there are 15 pitchers. If a football team had 15 quarterbacks, uh, you would know there's a problem. But this is normal? I don't know. If you could write a story from the point of view of an inanimate object, what would it be? I started this question for a good 20 minutes, and I have no answer. Uh, it would probably be some type of heirloom that has been passed down from generation to generation and has seen a lot of life and a lot of experience. I don't know what that would be. I don't have an heirloom like that. And as far as a valued object, um, I have a favorite pen. Follow-up question. If you could write a book from the point of view of any place, what would it be? If I could write a story about just one place, it would be El Moro Monument in New Mexico. There is an oasis at the bottom of a red rock cliff that people have been passing by and using for thousands of years, and every time that they come and stop there, they leave their name or a handprint or a pictograph carved into this red rock. It's fascinating because... You can see things that have been there for 3,000 years, uh, and you can see things that have been there for 500 years, like Spanish conquistadors, and you can see things that have been there for 200 years, cowboys. And now they don't let you write your name on the wall, uh, which some people wonder. These other people were writing their names on the wall. Why can't we write our name on the wall? Um, I think it's because modern people are terrible. Question, what is your favorite book that no one has ever heard of? Okay, my first one is by an author who uh, people in Utah may have heard of, but probably not if you're outside of the LDS market. Stephanie Black is my favorite writer in the LDS market, uh, and her book, The Believer, is actually a Mormon dystopia. It's fantastic. The other author in the national market, who I don't think many people have heard of, is Lara Kashishki. Kashishki. I don't know how to pronounce it. But she writes fantastic books. Um, my favorite of hers is called Feathered, which is kind of a thriller and kind of literary and kind of magical realism. It's really good. What do you wish people understood about you? So in evaluating my persona in the world, which is mainly my persona in social media, I think that I come across as a kind of scattered, impulsive joke teller whose jokes aren't always funny. I think think what people don't understand about me is that I am much more of a calm, deep thinker than that. 
I am really much more serious than I am jokey, and that doesn't come across on Twitter. Question, how many bones have you broken? I have broken four. Actually, two, but twice. I uh, broke my leg, my lower leg, twice when I was in high school. And I broke my spine in two places, so two different vertebrae. I'm counting them as two. Those are all the questions that we have for today. If you missed the announcement last week, uh, if you are a Patreon subscriber to me, then you will be getting the very first look at book three of the Variant series. I'm going to be putting it out chapter by chapter as a serial, uh, and so if you are interested in that, uh, then go to patreon.com slash Wells. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you on Wednesday.